Over the years, I have used plenty of different blind bags, and today I want to cover some of the blind bags that I have used throughout the past couple of years, and they're ones that are pretty hot in the market, and I think you guys might be interested in maybe picking one up for this next season. So I've got three different styles of bags, so stick with me on this one. Hear me out on the pros and cons that I've found of all of these, and I will tell you the one that I have found that I truly enjoy using the most out of all of the bags that I have tried. If you guys are interested in helping support the channel, I will leave a link in the description to my website. You can head over and pick up one of these shirts or one of these hats, and it means a lot to have your guys' support. So feel free to send me some pictures of you guys wearing the merch out and about, and I'll repost them for you guys. So uh, thank you to everybody who has placed your orders already. And I'm looking forward to this next season because I think I'm going to drop some new stuff, so stay tuned. Let's go ahead and dive on into this video and start with our first blind bag and work our way through them. This is a Tangle Free Flight Series blind bag. This is a blind bag that I used for at least two seasons. And it's a pretty generic layout of a blind bag that most people use. So... This one is nice because it's got the shoulder strap, you carry it over one shoulder, and it's got a handle on the top so you can just carry it around like that. It's got a bungee strap on the top, which I really like because I would throw my coffee or my water bottle in on top and cinch that thing down. It also holds like an extra hoodie or something on top too. It's got buckles on the front which are metal, which Tangle Free does a nice job with the metal buckles. I'll give them props to that. I absolutely love them. They're nice and solid, they won't break. So you open the thing up and it's got Velcro and buckles holding it down so all of your stuff stays contained and nothing's falling out. On the inside of the lid here, there's two mesh pockets and there's a zipper right here. You just pull this handle, zips both sides, nice and easy. And it's got a magnet close on that as well. So the inside is just one big compartment with the exception of this little flap here where you can keep some stuff in there. So I actually felt something in there. I wonder what I keep in this thing. If I remember correctly, lens wipes. Very important. Sunglasses and camera lenses. Those are great to keep around. But on the inside of the bag, but on the inside of the bag, it's just one big open compartment. You know, you put your box of shells in there and your calls and stuff. There's a pretty limited amount of space on the inside of this thing which that's kind of a drawback to this. There's a pocket on the front, which uh, looks like there's something in here as well. We've got a pocket knife. Of course, there's just random crap lying around in all my old bags. But there's a pocket on the front here with some holders here. I believe these are for choke tubes, if I remember correctly. And then on the sides, there's pockets as well. I wonder what kind of goodies we'll find in here. Nothing on the side pocket. Let's see if there's anything in this one. Nothing in there either. So, total capacity here is we've got this pocket on the front, two on the sides, one big compartment in the middle, and a couple of spots to keep things on the inside of the lid. Oh, I forgot. There's also one on the back. This one does not close. Pop tart wrapper and bunch of grass go figure but I loved using this bag it was pretty great it didn't hold as much stuff as I personally needed it to hold so I was limited to what I could bring with me but if you're just the everyday weekender going out and packing calls and shells and your cup of coffee in there that'll definitely get the job done and it's got room for all kinds of goodies, tons of pockets. But one thing I don't particularly care for about the bag is the shoulder strap. I've grown accustomed to using backpack style blind bags. I personally prefer them. So with that being said, a couple of drawbacks for me personally is the capacity. It doesn't hold as much as I need it to hold. And I don't like using the shoulder strap when I'm carrying things in. That's just my personal preference. All in all, it's a pretty awesome bag. I loved using it, but I got some new bags that I absolutely love using more. So, that's a solid option. Up next is actually another Tingle Free bag. I got this in my Hunter's Hall box uh, this past season, 
and I use this for turkey hunting mainly. I tried it for waterfowl for a little bit and I didn't care for it. So this one, it's got three big pockets on the front side of it and then it's got two even bigger pockets on the sides. So these side pockets, what I would do is I'd put my water bottle in one and my coffee cup in the other. And then on the inside is a, just a really big compartment where you can throw all of your stuff inside one big thing and then it's got this little pocket on the top with a zipper. All of the pockets on the outside buckle closed so you gotta fold that over the top of it and then cinch it down and then it's closed. The inside there's a drawstring you pull that and then the top lid of it just like the pockets on the front you pull that over and buckle it. A perk of this bag is that it's waterproof so it's got a waterproof bottom on it as you guys can see and the whole big bucket inside is waterproof as well. One complaint that I have about this bag is carrying it on my back. It's not very comfortable. So I put items in it and it's lumpy on the back side on my back. With it being lumpy, it's then uncomfortable on my back when I'm carrying it in. It's got a solid built handle. The straps are really solid. It's got game totes on the straps, which that's pretty cool. And then uh, it's got straps to go around your waist as well. And then I believe it's designed to where you can strap this thing with the two with the waist buckle and then this one and strap it around a tree. So once again, it's another solid built bag, but for me, this is not something I'm totally in love with for waterfowl hunting, but for turkey hunting, I loved using this bag. I was able to have a compartment for everything I needed and be able to find things quickly. So like with this bag, everything's in one compartment and it can get jumbled and it can be difficult to find the thing you need quickly. This one, like I've still got some stuff in here from turkey season. So what's in here? Got a pocket knife in this one. This one is shells. So got the old third degrees. And then I don't, I've pretty much emptied this out, but on the inside of this, I would keep my jacket and an extra hat and gloves and everything else that goes along with turkey hunting. So um, it's a good option for you. But personally, this was not the bag for me for waterfowl, but for turkey hunting, I absolutely loved using this thing. So there is another option. We're getting to the backpack style, which I really like, but that bag is not the one. Now, moving along, this is a bag that I used really frequently when I was duck hunting. So two years ago, this was, this was the bag. This was the bag I was using for every hunt. And even in the beginning of this past season, this was my bag that I used. This is the Rogers Double Spinning Wing Backpack. It is absolutely awesome. I love using it. We'll start with the straps. It's got really thick padded straps. It's got a chest buckle on it and it fits really comfortably on your back. Excellent padding on the back side of the backpack so that keeps it from getting lumpy with items like the Tangle Free backpack did. So that's a really nice feature on it. If you guys can see on the sides it's got little slots for your Mojo or Lucky Duck poles. And then on the inside is one big pocket and then there's two smaller pockets on the outside of the bag. Now inside the bag I keep spinners and I usually scoot them back a little ways and I've got room in here for other items. So you know I would put my water bottle and coffee cup on one side and then on this side I put my shells and my calls and whatever other items I'm bringing with me. I try to pack pretty light, so I don't take a lot of things that aren't a necessity. Pocket knife would usually go on the outside pocket right there, and then, like I said, I would fit whatever I needed inside here, camera gear and all that good stuff because that takes up quite a big bit of room and this bag is able to carry it all. So, another thing that I've done is I've put the two spinners on one side of the bag and then that will actually close and zip and then you've got this whole other side to put whatever else you need in there. 
I like this bag because it's an open cockpit design. So I'm able to find everything that I need. I can see every inch of this and find whatever item I'm looking for. But this was my bag until the next one we're going to talk about came out. So this one, really solid pick. It's not super expensive. You're able to carry two spinners in it plus more and carry all of your items. I really like this bag. This has become kind of my bag that I keep my spinners in and just keep them in the trailer or in the garage or whatever. It keeps them white, tight, and right, and I know where they are. But solid bag, but there's one more that came out last fall that I like even better than that one. And that bag is this one. It looks pretty similar to the last one, but the inside is absolutely different. The outside pockets on the sides are bigger. These will hold three inch boxes of shells. The other one would not. And it's got the holes on the sides for the spinner pulls. And it's also got D-rings on the sides as well. Straps are the same. It's got the padding on there. Uh, the bottom, it's a hard bottom. The other one wasn't hard. So this one's got kind of like a molded plastic bottom. It's not necessarily waterproof, but it's water resistant. So putting it on wet ground is really not a big deal. Going on to the inside of the bag, I know I've done a video reviewing this bag before, but for those of you guys who haven't seen it, you can see it. Um, I think something I forgot to mention in the last bag was the center part holds your Lucky Duck wings. So this one, it's, an, uh, it, it's a beefed up version of the last bag we talked about. It's got two pockets up top. It's got pockets right here. It's got pockets right here, if you guys can see, hopefully, maybe. So there's pockets, nope, my hand was in the way. There you go, pocket here, pocket here, pocket here, pocket here, and open in the bottom. The back side has some mesh pockets on it, which is where I usually keep my game tote, and that hangs out back in there. So, oh yeah, one more thing. The inside of the lid, it's got a mesh little pocket there, and then a clear plastic pocket right here. Now, why do I like this bag over all the other ones? Well, it, it's pretty simple. This holds everything I need it to hold. I have never used this for spinners, even though it's the Elite Spinning Wing bag. I don't use it for spinners because it's usually full of everything that I need to take in for a hunt. Because making these videos, that requires a lot more space to keep things. So I keep that camera in here, water bottle, coffee, uh, extra big coffee thermos to refill my coffee cup and then I've got all of my shells and calls and game totes and it fills up pretty quick but I like this bag because I've got a compartment for everything that I need so calls are in one shells are usually in the bottom water bottle and coffee are on one side camera gears on the other game tote uh, hearing protection gloves it all fits in here and on top of that I can throw my big jacket in here as well and zip it up and close it. So that is why I like this bag. Even though it's a spinning wing bag, it can be used as a blind bag and I absolutely love this thing. If you guys are interested, I think I've got links to this and the other bag, the other Rogers bag in the description. Check them out. Make it your new blind bag for this next season. You won't regret it. You're able to fit so many things in this. Like just comparing these two bags, this one and this one, like you can see the difference between the capacities of these like like I said this is good for like you know the weekend warrior you're just going out with your box of shells and your calls and a snack like you don't need a lot of stuff when you're doing that but if you're like me and you carry a lot more stuff you need your water coffee camera gear whatever else you'd like to bring this is an awesome bag to use so those are some different styles of bags I'm just shedding my light on why I like using this one over this one. Would I use this one again? I might. I use it to carry a bunch of shotgun shells and other things, so it's not being unused. But this is not my everyday hunt bag. So let's say I'm going on a dove hunt. I don't need this thing. I, th that's too much. If I'm going on a dove hunt, I don't need to carry a lot of stuff with me. We're taking decoys and spinners and, you know that's going to do. That's going to hold my shells and get me through a couple hours of dove hunting. But if you're going out for a big waterfowl hunt, 
packing a lot of stuff in, keeping it all in one self-contained unit is really helpful. So that is my take on it. Drop in the comments down below what you guys like to use for your blind bag. Do you have any recommendations of brands and styles that you like? This is just my personal opinion and I wanted to share my experiences with these. They're all great bags, but they're great for different reasons. So I have my everyday bag because it's my everyday bag. And one thing I forgot to add is this thing is freaking awesome inside an A-frame because I'm able to flip the lid like it is right now and set it in front of me in the A-frame and I can reach down and pick up whatever I needed out of my bag. Whereas with this guy, I can have it open, but it's not as easy when this thing's packed full of stuff to find the item that I need very quickly. So that is, that is my, my opinion on these bags. If you're shopping for a new blind bag, I hope this video helped you out. Take a look at different styles and see what fits your style of hunting best and go with that one because you know, everybody hunts a little bit different. You might not need to carry as much stuff as I do. You might be hunting in wetter areas like you're wading into flooded timber. You might want something a little more waterproof than something that's not and it could get stuff on the inside of the bag wet. So there's different things to keep in mind when you're shopping for a blind bag. Take it or leave it. That is what I think of all of these blind bags that I have used for duck hunting. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It means a lot when you guys do that. You can follow me on my social media. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. So be sure to follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you on the next one.